Hello, everyone. We're going to talk today about what's called in the church the sanctuary, the sanctuary, okay? This particular part of the church uh, goes way back into our roots as not only Catholics, but even before the Catholic Church was formed by Jesus in his uh, own tradition of his family and um, the people of God known as the Jewish people the Israelites who uh, formed the Jewish religion. And of course, Jesus was a Jew. He was part of, part of a Jewish family. And one of the things that they were asked by God to do was to, when they built temples and synagogues, was to include in there what we see here called a sanctuary, a sanctuary. So even they had the same, and that's where our roots of our structure and everything comes from, okay? It includes, in the case of the Catholic faith, um, every sanctuary is supposed to have a crucifix. We have one on the very top of the sanctuary, overlooking the sanctuary. That's the San Damiano cross and crucifix. And most sanctuaries have a table with the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies. Many of those tabernacles are actually right in the center, in the back. Uh, ours is off to the side here, okay, with the sanctuary light that is shining. In the case of the people of Israel in the temple in, in uh, Jerusalem, they had the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, that would hold the tablets of the law, the Ten Commandments. In our case, it holds the master of the new law, Jesus Christ. And we'll look at that more closely uh, when we go over there in a little bit has an altar in the center with two candles flanking it, right? And it has another, almost looks like an altar, but that's an ambo or a pulpit, okay? And we'll look more closely at those as well. And then in the ba back, of course, we have the chairs that are used for the ministers and for the priest who celebrates. And we'll look more closely at those as well. So now we look more closely at the, at the altar, the actual altar, which is in the center of the sanctuary. And uh, as I'm done in the other videos, I want you to look up these words. How do you spell them? Okay. So how do you spell the word sanctuary? And how do you spell the word altar? This is, again, very specific to the liturgy. So make sure you choose the right word for the word altar. Okay. Um, and... On this altar, it's first of all made of marble, and you see in the center, we have beautiful figure of Jesus our Savior, okay? And you probably can figure this out, there are 12 figures, three top right, three top left, three bottom left, and three bottom right, and they stand for the 12 apostles, okay? They represent the 12 apostles. And not every altar has this, but our specific altar has this piece, okay? And then you notice as you go around, this altar has pillars that again just show us a support to the altar as well as the centerpiece that helps to support the altar, all right? Of course, we have the microphone, which is for modern day. All right, we have that design that goes throughout the church. Okay. Now, I want to show you, though, on an altar, you see here on this corner, we have a etched in cross. This, by the way, this cloth is called the altar cloth. Very simple. It's like having a it's like having a cloth on your uh, dining room table at home. Then you see in the center there's another cross there. In that corner, another cross over there. So there's actually a total of five of them. And why do we have the five? 
different crosses because of the five wounds of Jesus Christ on the cross. He was wounded in each of his hands when they had the nails put in. Okay. He was wounded in each of his feet as they put the nails in. And then the fifth wound, he was wounded in his side when they put the spear into his side. So the altar has those five crosses marking the five wounds of Christ because the altar represents Christ, the center of the church, the center of our lives. Okay? Next we have the pulpit. This again looks like almost like a small altar, right? It has the pillars as well, and table on top. And again, we get these roots from the Jewish faith, the way the Jewish faith would set up their sanctuaries with an altar and also with an ambo, a pulpit for proclaiming the scriptures, the prophetic, prophetic teachings and scriptures and the scriptures of the law, all right? So I'd like you to look up both of those words, the word pulpit and the word ambo, because it could be either of those in a church sanctuary to proclaim the word. And then you'll notice the markings that are here in the center of the pulpit. Let me do a little zoom in here. There we are. Okay. So the larger one, of course, it looks like a cross, and then almost the top of the cross creates a, a P, like the letter P, right? And that's a design that comes from an ancient marking that was used in the early church as a symbol. And the symbol was to secretly let people know that you were a Christian. Because during the times of the persecutions, when people, it was illegal to be a Christian, they would develop different signs and symbols to help people to know who they were. And one of them was this type of a, a little different than this, but uh, very similar to this. And it stood for the first two letters of the name Christ from the Greek language. So in Greek, the cross or the X symbol was the letters CH, and then the P was actually the letter R in Greek. So CHR, the first three letters of the name Christ. And then the smaller letters that look like, almost like an A, like a rounded A, and then an upside down horseshoe on the right there, you see? Those are the first letter, that's the first letter and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. The letter on the left is the, is the uh, letter alpha, that's where we get the word alphabet from. Alpha and beta are the first two letters of the Greek alphabet. And then the other one on the right, it looks like an upside down horseshoe. That's actually the letter omega. That's the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And it comes right from the Bible. Jesus is the alpha and the omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Okay? Then the pulpit has the pillars, as I mentioned. But let me take you up there and show you from the side. Okay, a little different than the altar. And it has a little bit on the table part, then it has a little raised, a little bit of a raised, looks like a book stand, right? That's done on purpose. And this book, it's called a lectionary. Lectionary. Another word I want you to look up. Okay, the word lectionary. And this has readings right from the scriptures, from the Bible. Of course, I have the microphone that we need for these days. Just like a book stand has this little sill so the book doesn't slide off, right? And we have some shelves back here to keep other books, a little stoop, a little stool for the young kids when they come to do the reading, see? And it goes around, 
his side, right on the edge of the sanctuary. See there. Okay. So the words I want you to know here and look up the spelling of pulpit, ambo, and lectionary. Very good. Okay, now we have come to the tabernacle. When you see again, the tabernacle similarly is on an altar. And it has the pillars, right? It looks like it's made of gold, but it's not made of gold. It's actually made of brass, okay? Has the green banner behind for the ordinary time. Has the light all the way to the right. You see, that's the sanctuary candle. And when that is lit, that tells you that Jesus is present here in the Blessed Sacrament. Okay, so I want you to find the word tabernacle and learn that spelling and spell that. Okay. And then I want you to, another word I want you to spell, I'm going to show it to you. It's this word of the, the action I'm going to do. It's called the genuflection, remember? Anytime we are in front of the Blessed Sacrament, we genuflect, right? That's a way of showing honor to Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. We genuflect. So look up the word genuflect to spell that one. And we'll get a little closer to the tabernacle itself. So this again goes way back to the Jewish tradition. They have tabernacles as well, especially in the temple in Jerusalem. And it basically was to hold the Holy of Holies, which was the sacred tablets of the law. Remember, Moses went up Mount Sinai and God wrote on tablets of stone the Ten Commandments, what we know as the Ten Commandments, the commandments of the law. Well, now, instead of that, we put the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle, which is Jesus Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, in the Eucharist, because he is the Holy of Holies. He is the new law of the new covenant. He is the new word made flesh in the Holy Eucharist. So we keep that in the tabernacle. So you see how she has a key, which we lock up during the day. So we keep Jesus safe because it's so special and precious. All right. Then near the tabernacle is this box here, right? That's called an ambry. And again, I want you to look that word up and spell it, the word ambry. And inside the ambry, we have the sacred oils. Okay, three sacred oils. All right. And you probably can see in there, but the bottom one has etched in it the SC. That stands for sacred chrism. Sacred chrism. The second one has etched in it the OC, oil of catechumens. And then the top one has the OI, oil of the infirmed, or oil of the sick. So we use this top one for when we do anointing of the sick, the sacrament of anointing of the sick. This one is used in baptism, oil of catechumens. And the sacred chrism we use for the different ceremonies conferring the Holy Spirit. And we keep them safe here in the ambry. So chrism is used at baptism, confirmation, holy orders. It's also used to bless and consecrate a new church and a new altar. Okay. And we, in our church, we have that right next to the tabernacle, also part of the sanctuary. Okay. 
So I want you to look up the words tabernacle and ambry and get those spelled correctly so you know them. And the last thing for now that we want to talk about in the sanctuary is the chairs that are used. Okay. So the center chair is called the presider's chair because the priest is the presider of the mass or the sacraments that he celebrates in the church and the different liturgies. The two side chairs that are matching, they are for either deacons, like we have a deacon, Tom Bennett, who's our deacon, and he uses that chair when he's serving at the Mass. Or it could be used for what are called con-celebrants, other priests who celebrate together with the presider priest. Okay, And then we have the side chairs, which are for the other ministers called altar servers. Okay, And they're in the sanctuary as well. Maybe I should show you this one last piece. This is called the Credence Table. Credence Table. On there would go the chalice, the cruets, the finger towel, finger bowl, finger cruet. You see on the bottom they had the communion plates that we use. It has the Roman Missal that we store there. Back here you have the stands for the processional candles and the processional cross that we use on Sunday that are kept in the sacristy. Okay. So there you have it. And there's the view from the sanctuary into the church.